Welcome back to the library everyone. Today our tale takes us into the depths of Azeroth's history as we uncover the lore of Duskwood. Duskwood, once known as Brightwood, resides within the Kingdom of Stormwind. Nestled in the southern central reaches of the Eastern Kingdoms, positioned to the south of Elwyn Forest, east of Westfall, west of Deadwind Pass, and north of Stranglethorn Vale, it now exists under an everlasting darkness, a transformation brought about by the malevolent magic unleashed by Medivh's demise. This once scenic part of Elwyn Forest now stands shrouded in gnarled trees with a thick black fog covering the woods, invoking an aura of intrigue, a land of mystery we aim to unravel in this very narrative. The story of Duskwood commences a remarkable 10,000 years in the past. In an era after the fragmentation of the supercontinent known as Kalimdor into the recognisable lands of today in the aftermath of the Great Sundering, a time when the Night Elves reigned supreme over the lands. Their ascendancy stemmed directly from the bestowed power of the original World Tree, Nordrasil, situated atop of Mount Hygel at the new Well of Eternity's location. The great dragon, Alexstrasza, imbued the tree with vigour and vitality, gifts that augmented the Night Elves' strengths. Additionally, Ysera's blessing bound the tree and the elven druids to the Emerald Dream, granting them unhindered access to her realm, previously accessible only through arduous meditation. However, the most crucial of the blessings came from Nosdormu, ensuring the Night Elves' immortality as long as the tree endured. Embracing this power, the Night Elves delved deeper into Druidism establishing one of Azeroth's most expansive and formidable empires. Some druids, driven by their relentless pursuit of knowledge, ventured into forbidden territory by assuming a druid form deemed taboo to combat the satyrs during the War of the Satyr. For a deeper insight into the events surrounding this conflict, explore our dedicated tale, accessible through a secure portal provided in the description below. The aftermath of this war led to the establishment of the Scenarian Circle, a cohesive organisation tasked with guiding and overseeing the practices of the world's druids. Among the founding members of the Scenarian Circle stood Fandral Staghelm, a venerable night elf renowned for his knowledge and wisdom. For millennia, Staghelm dutifully contributed his expertise to the Circle until a perilous revelation came to light. A peculiar metal known as Saronite began to emerge in various regions across the world of Azeroth. This mysterious substance is intricately linked with the old god, Yog saron Despite the old god being confined within Olduar, his ominous influence persisted, his black blood seeped into the world and crystallised into this Saronite. This malevolent metal possesses the capability to corrupt all it comes into contact with. The appearance of Saronite on Azeroth was first documented approximately 4,500 years ago, manifesting in areas such as Ashenvale, Crystal Song Forest, Ferulus, the Hinterlands and notably Duskwood referred to as Brightwood during that era. When Staghelm caught wind of these widespread Saronite deposits plaguing the lands, it is rumoured that he bypassed consulting the Scenarian Circle and instead took matters into his own hands. In a bid to halt the spread of Saronite across the world, Staghelm and his closest followers secretly obtained six enchanted branches from the World Tree Nordrasil. They then strategically planted these branches in Ashenvale, Crystal Song Forest, Feralus, the Hinterlands, and in an area of Duskwood known to us today as the Twilight Grove and from these branches grew the Great Trees. These Great Trees effectively purged the Saronite deposits from their respective regions. Encouraged by their success, the Druids planted the final and most significant bough in Northrend, where it rapidly grew into the world tree known as Andrasil. Over time, these Great Trees flourished in their designated locations. Despite their pivotal role in eradicating the Saronite, the significance of these Great Trees gradually waned in the ensuing millennia. They left many adventurers puzzled about their origins upon first encountering them. Each great tree is accompanied by a portal and it is said that the druids could utilise these portals beneath the great trees to traverse the Emerald Stream. Unbeknownst to the circle, yogg -Saron had exploited the trees planted by Staghelm, using them as a conduit to access the Emerald Stream. Through these trees, the old gods disseminated small seeds of corruption into the dreamways, eventually polluting the dream and giving rise to what would later be known as the Emerald Nightmare. Additionally, the dragons of the Nightmare emerged from these portals, guarding the portals with utmost dedication, deterring even the most seasoned of fighters. Advancing through time, the next notable milestone in our exploration of Duskwood's tale is the arrival of the humans. 
In ancient times, human tribes hailing from the Kingdom of Arathor flourished in the northern regions of what we now call the Eastern Kingdoms. Arathor's influence persisted for over a millennium until it fractured into the Seven Kingdoms. Around 1,200 years before the events of the Dark Portal, noble families from Strom sought to depart the Arathi Highlands, seeking greener pastures in the northern territories of Lordaeron. Alongside this, led by Faldia, a descendant of Thoradun's lineage, some remaining Arathi descendants embarked on a southward expedition to establish Stormwind. Legends whispered in the Northern Realms spoke of the fading remnants of the Arathi disappearing into the southern wilderness of Azeroth following the dissolution of Arathor. Crossing the rugged mountains of Kazmodan, their challenging journey concluded as they settled in the southern expanse of the continent, vaguely also named Azeroth. Nestled in a verdant valley, they founded Stormwind, swiftly emerging as a self-sufficient force. Initially the smallest and most secluded human nation, Stormwind gradually prospered cultivating numerous farmland in the fertile vicinity. As Stormwind's populace grew, quaint towns sprouted around the Elwyn Forest, Westfall, the Red Ridge Mountains, and of course the region that would come to be known to the humans of that era as Brightwood. Our narrative of Duskwood now takes a sinister turn as we delve into the involvement of Medivh. Despite the details of Medivh's life being far too vast to be fully recounted here, a brief account is still relevant. Medivh, the son of Aegwyn, the guardian of Tirisfull, was destined to follow in his mother's illustrious footsteps as the protector of the land. As the Kingdom of Stormwind expanded, venturing into uncharted territories, it inevitably clashed with the indigenous inhabitants of the land. One such conflict arose with the Gurobashi Trolls of the Stranglethorn Vale, a region located just south of Duskwood. For more details on this war, you can refer to our tales of Elwyn Forest or Stranglethorn Vale. The war reached its climax with the decimation of large troll armies outside the gates of Stormwind as Medivh unleashed his formidable power upon them. Following these events, Medivh became apprehensive about his powers and later embarked on a journey to Karazhan to seek guidance from his mother on how to control them. Karazhan, a mage tower constructed in secrecy by the guardian Aegwyn approximately 600 years prior to the First War, served as his destination. It was during his time at Karazhan that Medivh encountered Morose, a companion of Aegwyn. Morose agreed to assist Medivh and oversee Karazhan, assuming the role of his castellan. Over time, Medivh fell increasingly under the influence of Sargeras, the corrupted titan and leader of the Burning Legion. Sargeras began to manipulate Medivh's thoughts and emotions towards a sinister end. As the darkness within Medivh grew, his isolation as the new guardian was thought to be the cause, and Morose suggested an alternative approach. If Medivh could not trust the Kirin Tor or the Council of Tirisful, perhaps inviting people from the surrounding regions for a banquet would prove beneficial. Burroughs believed that their motives would be genuine, driven only by curiosity, and their company might lift his spirits. In the ensuing years, Medivh hosted numerous gatherings, and indeed, his mood appeared to improve. As the tale unfolds, Medivh's journey led him to confront the orcish warlock, Gul'dan, ultimately resulting in the opening of the Dark Portal. At a subsequent banquet in Karazhan, following the portal's unveiling, Aegwyn made a startling revelation upon confronting her son. Medivh was possessed by Sargeras. Driven to madness by the malevolent demon, Medivh resorted to draining the life force of all nearby humans in a desperate struggle against his own mother. Among the victims were nobles from Grand Hamlet, a quiet peaceful town located in Brightwood. These events marked a significant and devastating loss for this peaceful town. The horror didn't cease there. At some point during the First War, Grand Hamlet fell prey to relentless orc raiding parties, their numbers swelling as they prepared to besiege the town. Though the forces of Stormwind valiantly held them off for a time, the relentless advance of the old horde ultimately led to the town's demise. As you may know, the Dark Saga of Duskwood doesn't conclude with the tragic fate of the citizens of Grand Hamlet. In a tale reserved for another time, towards the end of the Second War, Medivh would later meet his end at the hands of the Stormwind forces led by Anduin Lothar, Khadgar, and Corona. In the aftermath of his demise, fell energy surged forth, gradually corrupting the surrounding areas of Karazhan. This corruption extended into the Deadwind Pass and then seeped into Brightwood, transforming the once vibrant land into a perilous, thorn-ridden blight, shrouded in thick fog and eternal darkness. Consequently, in the third year after the opening of the Dark Portal, the land acquired a fresh moniker, Duskwood. 
This malevolent enchantment not only altered the terrain of the vicinity, but also affected the inhabitants dwelling within. Once, Alwyn Forest harboured a community of spiders, coexisting peacefully within the forests. Yet, as the curse shrouded Duskwood, transforming the tranquil woodland into a realm of dread, these spiders underwent grotesque mutations, swelling to monstrous sizes. The lurking, venomous arachnids commenced hunting their unsuspecting prey throughout the shadowed reaches of the land. However, in the face of such adversity, the humans of the realm proved their resilience. Despite the curse casting an eternal night over the land, they refused to abandon the region. Following the Alliance's triumph over the Horde at the conclusion of the Second War, the citizens of the once picturesque Brightwood dared to reclaim their ravaged dwellings in the newly christened and cursed territory of Duskwood. Darkshire emerged from the ashes of Grand Hamlet, its reconstruction aided by the guidance of Supreme Commander Tyrellion. Under his watchful eye, the kingdom's citizens were repatriated, breathing new life into the town with its solemn yet fitting new name. In a tale not recounted here, following King Varian Rin's disappearance, the Kingdom of Stormwind withdrew its troops from Duskwood due to the political machinations of Lady Katrana Prestor. Left to fend for themselves, the Night Watch was formed to defend against the various threats that plagued the reborn town of Darkshire. Initially led by Commander Althea Ebenlock, the Night Watch consisted of locals who underwent training to protect their home. They faced mutated spiders, marauding wolves, and an abomination crafted by the necromancer Abercrombie the Embalmer. Abercrombie, a Ravenhill alchemist, had been driven mad by his wife Eliza's death. He resorted to dark magic, placing his own heart within her corpse to revive her. This act cursed Eliza with a craving for human flesh, compelling Abercrombie to keep her buried. In his madness, and through unwitting adventurer's assistance, Abercrombie created the abominable Stitches, with the sole purpose to terrorise Darkshire. However, these threats would be but fragments of larger peril. The gravest danger looming over Darkshire and all of Duskwood was the relentless menace of the undead. Morbent Fell, a human necromancer, rose to prominence in the shadowed recesses of the region. Driven by visions of conquest, he raised an army of the undead from the graves of Duskwood, and he also acquired deceased bodies from the grave robber known as Dextran Ward. Ward would later be executed for his heinous crimes, after serving time in the Stormwind Stockades. From his eerie abode atop Forlorn Row in Ravenhill Cemetery, Morbin Fell wielded control over the undead hordes. Legend has it that Morbin Fell was linked to a sinister group known as the Dark Riders, a connection we'll delve into following this next tale of sorrow. As darkness continued its relentless advance across the land, some brave townsfolk ventured forth to uncover its source. Soon after setting out on their quest, the citizens of Darkshire vanished without a trace, their last known whereabouts being the foreboding Tower of Karazhan, this place believed to be the epicentre of the curse shrouding the land. A rescue mission was swiftly organised, entrusted to three battle-hardened individuals. Leading the charge was Duggan, a paladin loyal to the Kingdom of Stormwind and the Order of the Silver Hand. Having witnessed the horrors of the Second War, Duggan had made his home in Duskwood, with his wife Adina and their twin daughters, Lonia and Lyran. Joining him were his companions, Cardan, a stout dwarf from the Wildhammer clan, and Voldana, a high elf hailing from the Hinterlands. Together, they braved the night, their mission clear to rescue the missing townsfolk of Darkshire. Following the trail of clues, the trio found themselves at the foot of Karazhan's cursed tower. Inside, they were met with chilling sights, tormented spirits haunting the corridors, echoes of lives lost within the tower's walls. Amidst the shadows, they encountered Terrestrian Ilhoof, a corrupted satyr, and in the ensuing battle, Duggan met his untimely demise. Though fate claimed their leader, Cardan and Voldana managed to escape the tower's grip, fleeing the horrors within. Cardan and Voldana conveyed the heartbreaking news to Duggan's wife, Adina. Consumed by grief, Adina's mind faltered, rendering her incapable of caring for her twin daughters. In a noble gesture to honour their fallen comrade, Voldana and Cardan decided to raise the girls as their own. Lonia found her home in Queldano Lodge, nestled in the hinterlands under Voldana's care, while Cardan raised Lyran in Airy Peak. 
Years passed, and Lyra grew restless, yearning for knowledge about her parents, despite Cardan's reluctance to reveal the truth. One day, Cardan made a journey to visit Voldana in Qualdanil, unaware that Lyra had secretly followed him. It was then that Lyra discovered her long-lost twin sister, Lonia. Their reunion prompted Cardan to share the family's tragic history, a tale of a valiant paladin named Duggan, their mother Adina, and the dark events that unfolded within Duskwood. Determined to uncover the truth about their mother, the twins embarked on a journey to Darkshire, where they found their old home, now shrouded in darkness. Attacked by ghouls upon arrival, they were rescued by Watcher Dodds and his Nightwatch soldiers. The Watch's leader, Commander Althea Ebenlock, brought grim news. Their mother tragically ended her own life, and her corpse had been reanimated into an undead and was amongst those that threatened Darkshire. In a grim task, the twins set out to release their mother's soul from its prison of undead flesh. With determination and sorrow, after they had severed her decayed flesh, they laid their mother's soul to rest in a fresh grave in the hinterlands. It was at this solemn moment that the girls pledged to journey to Karazhan and liberate their father's spirit, ending his perpetual suffering for good. Years passed, and the twins, now young women, honed their skills. Lyran emerged as a skilled warrior, while Lonia, adept in magic, sought to contact their father's spirit. Duggan's warnings went unheeded by Lyran, who remained resolute in her quest to free him. In secret, they journeyed to Karazan, where they encountered visions of the past and their father's tormentor, Terrestrian Ilhoof. In a fierce battle against their father's killer, the twins emerged victorious, but not unscathed. Duggan's spirit had intervened to save them from treacherous enchantment. Despite their efforts, Duggan's spirit remained bound to Karazan. As danger loomed, the twins made their escape. Though they couldn't free their father's spirit, they found solacing knowing his resilience mirrored their own, a testament to their unbroken spirit in the face of the darkness. Transitioning from one sorrowful tale to another, Duskwood bears the burden of death's stories, embodied by the intimidating figure of Morla Dim. Clad in armour, this skeletal warrior roamed the Ravenhill Cemetery in Duskwood, a testament to the tragedy that marked his mortal life and then his afterlife. Morladim, once known as Morgan Ladimore, epitomised valour and nobility as a renowned knight. His life's mission was to champion the cause of the innocent, the downtrodden and the afflicted. Married at the age of 18 to a maiden named Elise, Morgan's life took a drastic turn when the Third War erupted in Lordaeron, Joining forces with Uther the Lightbringer, Morgan faced harrowing trials, witnessing the dissolution of the Knights of the Silver Hand, the fall of Uther, and the scourge unleashed by Kel'Thuzad and the demon lord Mal'Ganis. After returning home to Duskwood after the war's end, Morgan was met with even more devastation. His abode lay in ruins. Despite suggestions that his family might have perished and that they might be found in the graveyard, Morgan resisted initially heading towards Lakeshire. Yet an unforeseen force drew him to the Raven Hill Cemetery, where he spent hours scouring the graves, finally discovering the resting places of his wife and two of his children. Amidst his torment, he did not realise that he had not found the burial of his third child. Consumed by mourning turned to rage, Morgan, driven to madness, lashed out at the gravestones, unwittingly attacking cemetery attendants who attempted to intervene. After regaining his senses, Morgan was horrified by the carnage he had wrought and overwhelmed by despair, took his own life. The following day, Morgan's corpse and those of the attendees were discovered, and they were hastily buried in a secluded section of the cemetery to prevent further unrest. However, days later, Morgan's grave was found disturbed, and his body was missing. Cursed by his unrelenting grief and the innocent lives he had unwittingly taken, Morladim emerged from the grave. An undead entity haunting the very lands he once swore to protect, preying upon unsuspecting citizens. In the tale of Moor Ladim, one citizen holds particular significance. Sarah Ladimore, the third child, whom he had not encountered in the graveyard prior to his descent into madness. While Morgan believed his family to be all deceased, Sarah had actually survived and later joined the Night Watch, spending much of her life grappling with the circumstances surrounding her father's demise. Commander Althea Ebenlock of Darkshire embarked on a mission to end the terror wrought by the skeletal menace. In the 25th year, she sought the aid of adventurers in her quest against the undead threat. When Morladim fell to Alliance adventurers dispatched by the commander, she revealed the truth to the residents about Sarah's connection to Morladim, and dispatched some of them 
to inform her that he had finally been vanquished after years of terror. Upon receiving the news, Sarah expressed regret for her inability to intervene and asked the adventurers to bring her ring to her father's grave, symbolising her well-being and absolving him of responsibility for his actions. This gesture of love allowed Morgan to find peace in death, alongside his wife, seeking forgiveness for his sins in the light upon learning that his daughter was alive. Whilst on the matter of uncovering the truth, our next chapter in Duskwood's narrative is one of love and jealousy, the tale of Stalvin Mistmantle. Born in the Silverpine Forest, Stalvin traversed various paths before settling as an instructor at the Moonbrook Schoolhouse, also serving as a private tutor. His life took a sinister turn when he developed an improper infatuation with one of his young students, a maiden named Tiloa. Despite her affections already pledged elsewhere, Stalvin harboured delusions of a future with her, fuelled by a misguided interpretation of her gestures. Driven to madness by unrequited love, Stalvin committed a heinous act, slaughtering Taloa and her intended groom with an axe. His hands stained with blood, Stalvin retreated to his abode northeast of Darkshire, consumed by loneliness and madness, haunted by the darkness that enveloped him. Through unknown forces, perhaps sheer determination or a pact with darkness itself, Stalvin defied death, rising as an undead entity, forever cursed to roam the shadows of Duskwood, a spectre of lost love and murderous jealousy. Madame Eva, an esteemed resident of Darkshire known for her adherence to ancient arts and her skill as a fortune teller, felt a foreboding sense of danger surrounding her granddaughter, Alyssa Eva. Suspecting that Alyssa might be the next victim of the elusive Duskwood murderer, Madame Eva urgently enlisted the help of brave adventurers, tasking them with the unravelling of the mystery and Stalvin's whereabouts. Legend spoke of Man of Mistmantle as his grim abode, where he lurked as a revenant, thirsting for the blood of any who dared to cross his path. Crossing paths and intersecting stories are a frequent occurrence in the Duskwood lore with one of the most significant being the encounter between the Dark Riders and the Jorgen Farmstead. The Dark Riders were deceitful traders attempting to peddle counterfeit magical relics to Medivh. However, Medivh, under the influence of Sargeras, cursed them as punishment for their dishonesty. Their curse bound them to retrieve authentic magical artefacts from across the kingdom and deliver them to Karazhan. The exact nature of the curse remains unclear, and whether they are undead or not is unknown. Nevertheless, the Dark Riders have plagued the Kingdom of Stormwind, particularly Duskwood, ever since. Their presence is first noted at the Jorgen Farmstead, seemingly drawn by the temporal and spatial anomalies caused by a mystical artefact. The artefact in question was the Scythe of a Loon, a creation forged many moons ago by Balisria Starbreeze and Ralar Fangfire. They fashioned the scythe by attaching one of Goldrin's fangs to Balistra's staff. Rala and the druids of the pack sought to control the unbridled fury of the druid pack form by submitting willingly to the energies of the scythe of Alun. Instead of quelling their rage, however, the weapon transformed Rala and his followers into the Worgen, savage humanoids enslaved by their primal instincts. Enraged by Malfurion's scorn, Rala's druids wreaked havoc, attacking both elf and demon alike. Night Elves, bitten by the ferocious beasts, contracted the curse, transforming them into Worgen as well. In a desperate bid to contain the spread of the affliction, Malfurion sorrowfully banished the Worgen beneath Daryl Nia within the Emerald Dream, where they would slumber peacefully for eternity. The Scythe was then entrusted to Melthandris in secret, eventually fading into obscurity. Valinda Starsong, Malthandris' niece, ventured to cleanse Ashenvale of demons after the Third War and sought Alun's aid in her quest. At the shrine of Malthandris, she stumbled upon the hidden scythe of Alun. The artifact possessed the ability to weaken the boundaries of time and space. Holding the scythe, Valinda received a vision of chaos, the Worgen. Realising the scythe's true power, she communed with the Worgen, not through speech, but through a deeper understanding. As she channeled more of the scythe's energy, the barriers weakened further, drawing the worgen to Azeroth. Learning of the Archmage, Arugal, and the involvement in summoning worgen, she journeyed to the Eastern Kingdoms, seeking his aid. In Duskwood, Valinda encountered hostility at Roland's Doom, where she was attacked by Varkas. During the confrontation, a dynamite explosion claimed the lives of Valinda, Varkas, and his minions, 
entombing the scythe within the cave. The formidable weapon was later discovered by members of the Defias Brotherhood during a mining excavation, and among them was a nervous member named Jitters. Upon touching the weapon, Jitters unwittingly triggered its summoning effects, causing the mine to be overrun by Worgen, who mercilessly tore the men apart. Amidst the chaos, Jitters managed to flee with the weapon, and during his escape he misplaced it in the surrounding woods as he sought refuge. Escaping Roland's doom, he sought refuge in Darkshire, where he purchased a blank book from Clerk Daltrey and lodged for several days at the Scarlet Raven Tavern, spending his nights recording his thoughts in his journal. Departing abruptly, he hastily retreated to the barn on the Jorgen farmstead. The appearance of the scythe had attracted the attention of the Dark Riders, and upon arrival to the farm, they ruthlessly slaughtered the family of the farm's owner, Sven Jorgen, all before Jitter's eyes. Despite these murders, the scythe was not found. And now, the residents of Duskwood find themselves facing not only the undead and Worgen threats, but also the relentless pursuit of the Dark Riders, constantly seeking to claim the scythe of Elune. Alpha Prime, formerly known as Ralar Fangfire, was among the Worgen brought forth by the Archmage Arugal. He also harboured a relentless quest for the scythe of Elune, aiming to utilise it to liberate his fellow Worgen from the imprisonment and launch an assault on Darnassus. To achieve this goal, he established the Wolf Cult, a Worgen cult formed with the intent to propagate the Worgen curse and seek out the fabled Scythe of Elun. A man named Revel Cost, a faithful priest of the Church of the Holy Light, had found himself in Westfall while searching for the Cloak of Purity. It was here he encountered Carlane, a mage also in search of a missing artifact. Sensing the looming threat of the Dark Riders, they decided to join forces. However, their journey was soon interrupted by an attack by the Defias Brotherhood as they made their way to meet their contact, Thanos. In a desperate defence, Thanos revealed the existence of a secret artefact known as the Hand of Azora and used it against their assailants. This action drew the attention of the Dark Riders, who swiftly intervened, severing Thanos' hand and ultimately beheading him to claim the artefact. This encounter with death was not Revel's first. Years ago, his family had fallen victim to a savage attack by the summoned Worgen. Filled with determination, Revel mounted a horse to pursue the Dark Riders, while Carlane returned to Elwyn to report Thanos' tragic demise. Upon his return, Carlane found his home desecrated and his son Mardigan missing. His search for answers led him to Darkshire, where he learned that his son had been investigating the wolf cult, but had vanished while following leads. With the report of Dark Riders spotted at Manor Mismantle, Carlane's path converged with Revels once again. For Revel Cost, this convergence presented an opportunity for revenge against both the Dark Riders and the Worgen of the Wolf Cult, a chance he could not afford to miss. While tracking the Wolf Cult in Duskwood, Revel Cost's group encountered Jitters, who was hiding in the ruins of Raven Hill. Jitters revealed that the scythe had resurfaced at Roland's doom, and that the Dark Riders were in pursuit of it. However, it seemed that the Wolf Cult had already obtained the scythe and were using it for sinister initiation rites. After eliminating the cult members situated in Duskwood, Revel retrieved the scythe from the mine. Upon the request of Brink, an operative from the Stormwind Intelligence Agency, who had been tasked with recovering stolen artefacts, Revel devised a plan to ensnare the Dark Riders using the scythe as bait. Following the ambush, Brink took possession of the scythe with intentions to deliver it to a night elf named Valorn Stillbow. After this small defeat, the Dark Riders withdrew into the shadows. We will conclude the saga of the Dark Riders following our discussion on the Cataclysm's events. As the conflict with the Worgen persisted in the area, a particular family garnered increasing support for their unwavering commitment to combat the horrors plaguing Darkshire. The Kevin family staunchly dedicated themselves to battling demons, abominations, undead, and particularly the Worgen. Recognising that their influence did not quite match that of the Night Watch, Jonathan Kevin determined that their foremost objective would be to stem the growth of the Worgen population in Duskwood. In addition, they provided assistance in the struggle against Morbin Fell. After some time, following the Cataclysm and the resurgence of Deathwing the Destroyer, Duskwood witnessed its fair share of upheaval. A few Gilneans arrived in Duskwood, among them Tobias Mismantle, who arrived in Darkshire seeking his brother's Stalvin's whereabouts. He temporarily stayed in the town to investigate. However, the residents were reluctant to discuss the matter until Tobias met Clerk Daltrey, who had assisted in the initial inquiry into the Duskwood murderer. 
Seeking the truth, Tobias consulted Madame Eva, who sent him and an adventurer to Manor Mistmantle. There, Tobias confronted the undead murderer his brother had become. Tobias, revealing he had been afflicted by the Worgen curse, enraged in a fierce battle with his brother, and with the help of the adventurer, managed to defeat Stalvin. Following the cataclysm, Duskwood faced another threat. Despite being previously defeated by adventurers in Raven Hill, Morbin Fell returned as a lich, posing a renewed danger to the region. Once again, adventurers were called upon to confront this necromancer. Previously, Morbin Fell had been vanquished with Morbin's Bane, a holy artifact capable of dispelling his protective enchantments. Seeking out the scattered pieces of the Bane within Duskwood's depths, adventurers repaired it and used it to weaken Morbin's shield, ultimately defeating him once more. Following his demise, Morbin's Bane, also known as the Torch of the Holy Flame, was placed outside his former abode to keep the undead subdued by Watcher, Sarah Ladimore. Amidst Azeroth's turmoil caused by the cataclysmic return of Deathwing, the battle against the Worgen of Duskwood persisted. The Kevin family remained steadfast in their struggle against the darkness of Duskwood, rallying Alliance adventurers to combat the Nightbane Worgen menace throughout the region. And while discussing the ongoing Worgen threat, let's revisit the story of Sven Jorgen. Following the resolution of his family's tragedy, Sven himself fell victim to the feral Worgen of Duskwood, becoming one of them but while still retaining a fragment of his consciousness. Remarkably, he managed to reclaim his sanity through the use of alchemy, holding Jitters responsible, albeit unintentionally, for the arrival of both the Worgen and the Dark Riders to Duskwood. Sven now resides in Raven Hill, and from there he dispatches adventurers to uncover the truth behind Morbin Fell's resurgence. During the upheaval of the Cataclysm, a wave of unsettling letters began appearing on the doors of Duskwood's residence during the night. Though the perpetrator remained elusive, the Council of Darkshire uncovered that the Twilight's Hammer Cult was behind these apocalyptic missives, attempting to sway citizens to their cause. With the ongoing war after the Cataclysm, Stormwind's military was overstretched, dealing with larger threats, leaving Darkshire vulnerable without a single footman for protection. Nonetheless, King Varian Rin issued a decree summoning numerous adventurers to assist Commander Althea Ebonlock as the Night Watch struggled to fend off marauding wolves and the roving bands of Feral Worgen. At a certain point, Feral Worgen breached the Town Hall, wreaking havoc and causing substantial damage, including the destruction of half of the archives. Years later, during the Burning Legion's third invasion, Althea Ebonlock, some of the Council of Darkshire, and several Night Watchers in Darkshire defected to the Veiled Hand a human sect aligned with the Burning Legion, aiming to undermine the Kingdom of Stormwind. The reasons for this betrayal still remain elusive, but it is speculated that they were enticed by promises of freedom and respect from the Herald, also known as Melris Maligan from Stormwind City. This shocking turn of events led to heightened surveillance in the town while demonic rituals were conducted using the blood and skulls of Darkshire's inhabitants. Sister Althea Ebonlock addressed the council in the town hall, announcing plans to depart for Stormwind City with Caden Shadowgaze to initiate a demonic invasion. However, the meeting was disrupted by the Shadow of the Uncrowned, a secret organisation dedicated to safeguarding the world from the Burning Legion. The Uncrowned attempted to assassinate Althea, but the attempt on her life failed, and the council members managed to escape. Sarah Ladimore did not join the Legion's forces and hinted that her comrade's defection was likely due to dark magic. When the Shadow of the Uncrowned infiltrated the town, it is reported that Ladimore was observed protecting several innocent inhabitants. The Kevin family also refrained from joining the Legion and were reportedly found hiding in their house while the cultists wreaked havoc. And like the family, not all members of the Night Watch succumbed to corruption. Some remained loyal, as evidence of a guard found dead in Raven Hill demonstrated the tragic fate of those who resisted the influence from their former comrades. Commander Althea Ebonlock would later meet her demise at the hands of Corona and the uncrowned rogues in Stormwind City. Following the events in Gilneas, the Scythe of Aloon found its way back to Darnassus, later receiving approval from Taranda Whisperwind to be entrusted to the Druids of the Dream Grove. Belisra and Valhorn thus journeyed with the Scythe of Aloon to Duskwood, 
both to delve deeper into their research of the Worgen and to meet with the new Archdruid of the Dream Grove. On Tyrande's directive, they brought it to the Twilight Grove in Duskwood to pass it on to a Druid adventurer. However, upon the Druid's arrival via the Emerald's Dream, Valorn was swiftly attacked by Aridan, the leader of the Dark Riders, resulting in the theft of the Scythe of Elune, which had now finally fallen into the Dark Rider's possession. While Belisra remained with Valorn, the Druid joined forces with Revel Kost at Manor Mistmantle, collaborating to reclaim the Scythe of Elune from the Dark Riders at Karazhan. After Sargeras drove his sword into Azeroth, the Scythe of Elune, along with all Legion artifacts, had its power completely drained to help neutralise the wound. Years later, during the Fourth War, heightened activity was observed in Raven Hill and the Twilight Grove of Duskwood. Vassandra Stormclaw joined Oliver Harris and other Raven Hill residents in researching the Worgen Curse. Nightbane Worgen were captured for experimentation, while the community faced challenges posed by the particular vicious member of the Nightbane pack known as Blood Eyes. Meanwhile, Manor Mistmantle witnessed the emergence of a rare flower named Elune's Grace, which was surrounded by a pack of Mistfang wolves. In a separate development, Tess Greymane expressed a desire to embrace the Worgen curse in order to better understand her people. When her father hesitated to comply, Tess and a Gilnean adventurer journeyed to Duskwood seeking guidance from Vassandra Stormclaw. While Tess pursued her own tasks with the Druid, the adventurer embarked on a mission to capture Blood Eyes, collect fangs from the Mistfang wolves and retrieve Elune's grace. These items were then used by Vassandra in the Twilight Grove to summon Goldrin through a dream portal, granting Tess a vision wherein she experienced the fall of Gilneas as a worgen. Following the demise of the defected Althea Ebonlock and her treacherous associates within the Nightwatch, Sarah Ladimore ascended to the position of commander within the uncorrupted Nightwatch. In the aftermath of the Fourth War, a human necromancer seized the Torch of Holy Flame, an essential artifact maintaining control over Duskwood's undead from Forlorn Row. With the intent of amassing an undead army, the Necromancer's forces assault a Commander Ladimore at Raven Hill, resulting in the death and reanimation of numerous Watchers. Meanwhile, Flynn Fairwind and Matthias Shaw travelled to Duskwood on a quest for treasure. The two discovered Sarah wounded and afflicted with a decaying ailment following her confrontation with the Necromancer who had pilfered the Torch of Holy Flame. Flynn administered a healing potion, saving her life before escorting her back to Darkshire for further care under her watchful comrades. Following the defeat of the Necromancer, and the recovery and purification of the Torch of Holy Flame, Sarah met with Shaw and Flynn at the Scarlet Raven Tavern to express her gratitude for their role in safeguarding Duskwood from the undead menace. Shaw acknowledged the Nightwatch's crucial contribution and pledged to send reinforcements from Stormwind in light of the lingering threat alluded to by the Necromancer. Before departing Duskwood, Shaw entrusted the Night Watch with Flynn's treasure map. Grateful for their assistance, Vladimir and her watchers retrieved the treasure for them, a hand mirror as a token of appreciation for them both. Sometime later, amid Death Rising, a widespread Scourge assault targeted numerous regions within the Kingdom of Stormwind, including Duskwood. In response, forces from the Stormwind Army and the Argent Crusade were deployed to safeguard the area and its populace against the undead onslaught. Following the resurgence of the Dragon Isles, the Nightwatch still remained vigilant in Duskwood, and after two decades of dedicated service and after bearing witness to the region's numerous trials, Corsten Willard, one of the organization's most steadfast watchmen, opted to retire. Seeking adventure and a change of scenery, he chose to join the Dragon Scale expedition, longing for a taste of adventure and maybe just a little bit of sunshine. And on that topic, not that the inhabitants would notice, but it's time to let the sun set over Duskwood. Our narrative of these forests must come to an end. As the shadows lengthen and the last embers of twilight fade, we come to end our journey through the haunting tales of Duskwood. From the tragic fate of the Ladimore family to the valiant efforts of the Night Watch against the encroaching darkness, we've delved into the depths of this forsaken land, uncovering stories of love, betrayal and redemption. Through our exploration, we've witnessed the resilience of its habitants, from the brave defenders like Sarah Ladimore and Revel Cost, to the ordinary citizens who faced unimaginable horrors with unwavering courage. Each twist and turn of this narrative has revealed the enduring spirit that refuses to be extinguished, even in the darkest of nights. 
But as our journey concludes, let us not forget the lessons learned amidst the shadows. And yet, in the heart of perpetual night, Duskwood remains illuminated by the resilience and the tenacity of its people, forever etching their stories into the narrative of Duskwood. <laughs>